Welcome to the series of Inspiring Women in Travel Asia, better known as IWTA. I'm your special guest presenter and co-chair of IWTA, and boy, do we have a wonderful episode for you today. Why? Because we have a very special guest, someone who is incredibly special. You could say the brains behind IWTA, and I want to welcome our very own Michaela Connor. Thank you. Hi, Michaela. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Okay, so Michaela, before yes. we get started, we know every journey has a story. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your story, your journey. Well, um, I was born in Sweden uh, many moons ago, uh, and uh, I, I grew up there to a single mother uh, living with my sister and my mom. And I was obsessed with these travel programs uh, growing up and I just wanted to like go and explore the world. So um, I did when I graduated, started traveling around the world and settled in different countries. And I guess that's kind of where my passion for travel uh, really um, got born, I guess, when I graduated and I left Sweden um, and I got to experience different cultures and living in different countries. Um, different industries that I never imagined working in. And I settled in New Zealand uh, in my 20s. Um, I came to travel through New Zealand and I just absolutely fell in love with the country. Um, so I decided to stay. And that's how I got into uh, the travel industry, kind of fell into it. It's wonderful. And how did you come into Asia and, and, and Thailand? Hmm, good question. Um, midlife crisis, I think, is the answer to that. Um, I uh, lived in New Zealand working in the travel industry for um, 14 years. And uh, throughout that time, I also became a, a mother, got married and became a mother. And uh, life uh, changed uh, and the priorities changes and I didn't really handle it. So uh, midlife crisis meant I need a challenge. I need to just move somewhere uh, and uh, for our kids to experience uh, something different, different culture. Uh, so we did. We moved to Laos um, in 2018 um, and then uh, to Thailand in uh, 2019. Uh, and, and I'm now based in Phuket, lucky to be based in Phuket. Wow. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Look, I've stalked you a little bit um, on LinkedIn um, and, and, and Googled you. You've been in the travel industry for a very long time and, and you've told us how you came to be in the industry, but how did you come to be in the HR people and culture space? Mm. Talk me through that. How did you, um, I mean, you say that, but how you? Travel did, but I mean, how did you go? Okay, I want to do HR or people and culture because it takes a strong woman to to, to really deal with um, people and culture. So, how did you come into that career path? Mm. Um, but I think kind of being people focused. I've always loved people. Uh, you know, through my travels, I love learning from people, learning learning different cultures, getting to know different people. Um, but I've always, uh, you know, started selling travel. I was managing a shop. I had, uh, you know, my team and I got really passionate about like um, seeing them develop and grow. Um, and then I went into a support role that was technical, not quite sure to this day how I ended up in a technical support role, but I did. Uh, and I got to really explore that um, area of developing people fully, like full time. I didn't sell travel, but I was helping the people selling travel uh, grow, if that makes sense. And then I got into the uh, HR department, um, uh, looking after the, the learning team, uh, the L&D team, learning and development team. And again, it took another step of focusing on the people, whether they've been around for 10 years, five years, five seconds. Um, and all people across uh, in New Zealand uh, as well in, in any role. And I really, really loved uh, that role. So when the uh, role as a people works leader uh, was advertised, um, I thought, why not? I'll apply, see what happens. It's the next challenge. And yeah, I was in that role for uh, seven years uh, in, in New Zealand and, and loved it. And now regional people works leader for for Discover in, in Asia. Wow, fantastic! Um, how long did it take you in your career path to get to to a leadership position? 
Um, I, I, 18 months and I was in like an assistant team leader position and, and then two years and I was a team leader. So, um, yeah, two years, and I never thought of being a leader or anything like that. It's just something that I guess starting in the travel industry, I just was surrounded by amazing, inspiring people. Uh, in a thriving environment, which helped me thrive. And I think that's kind of where I found my place, find my, my home. Yeah. Well, culture is everything, right? And, and, and if you get developed, you know, um, and you surround yourself with good people, you end up, the world's your oyster. You can do anything, just about anything. Speaking about doing anything and, and, and inspiration, how did you come up with IWTA? Tell us a little bit of about uh, the background behind inspiring women in travel Asia. Like, how did you come up with that concept? Where did that idea come from? Talk to talk us through that journey. Sure, sure. Well, so I, I moved to Laos, um, and you know, all my life I've been surrounded by strong, inspirational women. Um, like I said, my, my mom as a single mom. So it like the saying of uh, tribe to raise a village, um, that is rings true through my upbringing. So, in, you know, at home, I had aunties, grandmothers, strong female figures um, that helped shape who I am. And then throughout my travels, I met these amazing women uh, in different countries around the world, different backgrounds and different stories. And I, I just kept getting really inspired about who they were and their stories. And Moving them from New Zealand to Laos, like completely different, like culture shock galore. I, I question myself many times, like what on earth was I thinking? Um, but the people, um, I guess I was quite lost uh, at the time, uh, midlife crisis, as I mentioned. And the people in Laos, I can never thank them enough because they're the ones that helped me find myself again, who I actually was. Not the wife, not the mother, not the friend, who was I? And, and that journey was quite incredible. So throughout my work, I uh, got to you know, speak to these uh, women and men in our business across Asia and in Americas. And I kept hearing about their background and I got so inspired by, wow, you're the only uh, girl, for example, from your village that has um, graduated high school. That's an amazing story. And now you're running a, a travel company in that particular country. And, you know, she, she, this particular woman, she say, that's not that amazing. I'm like, that is amazing. And then throughout, you know, COVID happened. And um, I just kept thinking about this thought that there's got to be so many women in particular, because I'm generalizing now, but we tend to have a lot of self-doubt and not like believing in ourselves enough. I was thinking, how about if we could help each other, uh, especially throughout this COVID period where a lot of women also stepped away from their careers and work or lost their jobs uh, and might have been, uh, you know, the one person that was looking after the family. Um, how, how could we help inspire and empower each other and, and you know, help? help each other so that's kind of where the idea came from that there's got to be more we can do than just me hearing these stories and I only hear it from the women I, I work with or the communities we work in but I know there's must be millions right the, the travel industry is so special and unique uh, and we have amazing people working in it so that's where that idea was uh, created and my boss said give uh, you know Gary from Travel Daily a call and he was like yeah let's do it and that was it. It's a very quick decision. Yeah. I mean, I love the story and um, the background behind it and your motivations and your genuineness to, to, to care, to, to, to put these stories out there. And I just love it. And I actually brought a tear to my eye because I do want to talk about some personal things that you've talked about just then. Um, you've mentioned a couple of times now this midlife crisis. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the difficulties um, of women having to, to doubt themselves. Um, so talk me through a little bit about, you, you've met some fantastic women, women on your journey. You, you've, you know, you're telling their stories through IWTA. Um, 
took me through your story and, and and what is this midlife crisis what happened was there like this epiphany you woke up one day and like I'm not happy like whether the kids being naughty I mean as as mothers we, <laughs> yeah. we have a tendency to kind of um not sugarcoat or sweep things under the carpet we, but we're like pressure cookers kind of builds up and we're like everything's fine I've got everything under control and then it explodes and you have these midlife crises or these moments of doubt or imposter syndrome kicks in talk me through what your midlife crisis was really about were you unhappy yeah I want to know about mm. that mm. yeah I, so I call it a midlife crisis but maybe it was like just an explosion because what what happened is um I've always, you know, wanted to climb the ladder and have a career. I always wanted to kind of see what's next and what's next and learn and grow. And uh, then I had my kids and the first child, I was like, yeah, this, this is okay. I was uh, at the executive level, uh, part of a SWAT team. So very busy agenda, traveled quite a bit, uh, but we made it work. And I love my job. My husband loved his job and he also traveled and we kind of just puzzled. Um, but um, then I had my second child and it just, not, not because she was difficult or anything, but being a parent to one versus two was like, a, whoa, okay, two under two, very busy, uh, exhausting. And I think it was an 18 month kind of two year process um, of, I, I wanted to please everybody. I wanted to please everyone at work uh, and do a good job. I wanted to lead by example for all the women that wanted to be mothers or um, wanted um, you know, had, have had kids, have it all. You can have it all, yeah? And, and you can, you can, totally. Uh, I wanted to be the perfect wife. I wanted to be, you know, the perfect mother, the perfect sister, the perfect daughter. Um, and I guess I found myself choking, uh, literally. I, I was just, couldn't breathe. Um, and I had a, a, a day that I uh, called in sick and um, I couldn't get out of bed. And that day was the turning point because I thought, this is not you, what is going on? And I just didn't want to admit it to myself that I needed a break. Um, that was hurting my pride um, because to me it was like, I will, I will be failing, I'm, I'm failing. I'm failing in all of these titles that I have. Um, but then that day I kind of thought, but I don't know who I am. What am I doing for me that I really enjoy? And I couldn't remember. I, I just didn't feel the joy. Um, and that's where I decided to have a career break. Um, and that our family decided, let's just try to, you know, search for a challenge where we can move somewhere and, and you know, kind of start fresh and it's something, something new and exciting. And I saw the job advertised for Laos and I kind of, as a joke, sent it to my husband. Here's a challenge. And he's like, okay. And, and he applied. And then, you know, two weeks wow. later, he came to my desk and he's like, I got the job. I was like, huh? What? He's like, in Laos. I'm like, what do you mean? And we were both like in shock. The car ride home, got the kids from daycare. The old car ride home, we were like, okay, uh, this just became reality what happens and I had already made a decision to have a three month uh, career break and uh, it felt like uh, a huge just weight lifted off my shoulders I was going to spend those three months just finding myself spending time with the kids go back home to Sweden and to my roots to my family and just kind of get stable again and then find my place again and I wanted to come back to work, um, not that position, but I wanted to come back in, into the travel industry, the company I work for, because I loved it and part-time. So I could have that balance between being there for my kids, being there for me, and also being able to, to do the work. But obviously then we moved to Laos. So yeah, that's how it started. And I started just doing kind of 20 hours a week again when I was ready and my new boss was very good understanding supporting like supporting me in, in just taking my time um and then it crept up to i'm still part-time today and i feel like i found that balance but it's a forever struggle because i go all in into things projects things and i have to like michaela you're doing it again you know you you 
you're doing it again. I have to pull myself back. So I'm better at doing that. But that's what happened uh, at that time is um, I put too much pressure on myself and I, I lost control and I lost who I was. And yeah, okay. it's a good wake up call. Yeah, I mean, look, honestly, I, I know you probably can't tell, but I have actual tears in my eyes because that resonated deeply. I've been through the same journey and I, I'll tell my journey and my story another time, but this is all about you. And it's for you to come out of that, um, for you to tell that story about motherhood and, and finding yourself as a woman and, and for who you are rather than a wife, a mom, a, you know, an executive leader. Talk me through, I guess, it, was it mum guilt? Was it, you know... Because we, we, we experience these these feelings of doubt and, and and feeling like we're an imposter or because we're doing everything. We're trying to please everyone. You, you said earlier about wanting to please everyone. And I, I love the fact that you come out of it going, you know what, I'm going to learn to say no. I'm going to learn to put boundaries up. And and I, I think it's amazing and incredible. But um, what have been, how, you know, these other challenges are going to come back into your life. Other problems that are coming in within, you know, business. COVID within the travel tourism industry, what are some coping mechanisms or advice you would give to those suffering the same plight, you know, who are going through those, 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 that anguish themselves, you know, um, feeling helpless, feeling hopeless. Um, what are some coping mechanisms and advice that you would give them? Yeah, I, uh, on that day, my bad day, really bad day uh, everyone has bad days um i made a list of things that i used to really enjoy like reading listening to podcasts i don't like running but i have to exercise because i know it's good for my health but i had stopped doing all of that I, all of it stopped doing it um listening to music you know simple things like that just in the in the in the traffic in the morning just listening to my favorite tunes and singing top of my lungs stuff like that 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 makes me happy and I just didn't do any of it so I just made a list of things that I really enjoy doing and then slowly I just did like 30 minutes a day just have you time and then in the weekend have an hour or somewhere where you can have you time and I I think it's for me in my opinion that's really important because then you're looking after yourself and if you're looking after yourself you, you're much more able to look after your family, for example. And I'm, I'm, I bring my better self to work if I look after myself. I bring, especially being in, in you know, people in culture, I can bring my best self to the people that, that I'm meant to, you know, look after. Um, but my focus is obviously my family and I want to be the best version of that. And I have two young girls that I want to lead by example. I don't, I want them to see me exercising looking after myself eating healthy having fun laughing not taking myself so seriously um and i had to let go of some of that pressure which is very hard for me because i set very high expectations but you don't have to be everywhere all the time you, you don't have to be and kind of what's priority and what's important so i've learned to prioritize much better uh, and saying no is still very hard but I know what I'm saying yes to instead. So it's not having the regrets, yeah. Oh, I love that so much, Michaela, and what an inspiration. Um, speaking of inspiration, what or who has inspired you throughout your journey? Can, you know, um, someone that's probably impacted your life greatly or a quote or, you know, tell me a little bit about your inspiration and who's, who, who do you get inspired by? <sighs> Uh, I want to say my mom, of course, because uh, she's amazing and as a single mother has done an outstanding job raising uh, two girls, which uh, couldn't have been easy on her own. Um, but, you know, I, I've had so many people, women and men, inspiring me through my life. And I think uh, when I started working for Discover, the managing director and my leader uh, in, in people and culture are... Um, very inspiring and I really admire them. Um, they're very, both very courageous, uh, very um, brave, you know, they, they don't shy away from having real conversations, which I think is really important because that's how you stay true to yourself as well, um, without being demeaning, you know, you can have a real conversation without disrespecting the other person. Um, and that's a skill set to have. Um, and always looking at how they can grow themselves. 
um, and they set the expectations on people around them as well. And I think that's a, a great environment that they set, that they lead by example like that. Um, and very open and transparent. You can come and talk to them about challenges that you have, and it's not, they're not judging you and, and you know, you can have an open conversation. So the those two leaders that I currently have, I, I highly admire them. True inspiration, yeah. I was going to ask you what advice would you give to the to you to the younger generation and women in general, but you've just you've just said it all there. It's it's, it's a story, Michaela. I'm so inspired by you. I had tears in my eyes um, just about because it resonated about your story and and being a mom and and juggling everything and having such high expectations of yourself. There's so much to unpack, you know. And I'm just grateful for your time. I'm thankful for your story. Um, really loved hearing your story and your journey. Do you have any final thoughts or a, a favorite quote that you want to share with us? Um, one of my favorites is uh, alone, you can do so little, but together we can do so much. And everyone can do something. And when everyone does something together, it becomes something amazing. Uh, even if you think it's a small impact, it probably has a, a longer lasting impact than you think would be my last one. Uh, thank you so much, Michaela, for your time. I really sincerely appreciate it. What an inspiration. And thank you so much for um, being the brains behind IWTA. Thank you. Thank you for being on the committee. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>